Okay, welcome back to the show, and I have Mr. Mario Mancini here. It's that time of the month again for the Mario Mancini show. How are you doing, man? You know what? It's that time again for the Mario Mancini show. I have so many things to to. Ah! Ow! <laughs> Listen, hello, Paul. I've got nothing else to say. Okay, this is the Paul Roma time right now. Mario's out. <laughs> Roma's in. Maurice, how you doing? Good, Paul. Listen, uh, nice to nice to catch up with you today. How are you doing, man? I'm doing great. Hey, listen, look behind me. Four horsemen right there. Yeah. Part of history. Part of history. Part of history. Got a uh, little bit of a, a surprise that I'll throw out there uh, towards the middle or end um, of the show. And uh, I think it's going to... Um, Get a lot of talk going. Yeah, is that in relation to the four horsemen? It is. It is. Okay. Yeah. You know, so, I got I got have my uh, four horsemen shirt on right here. Mm -hmm. One that uh, you you haven't seen because uh, they never produced it. They thought it was a little too violent. Uh, so yeah. So I figured we get you know, it. special moment, special occasion, special shirt. Yeah, we'll get a we'll get a, a close up look at that T shirt later on. And I actually brought a T shirt of my own tonight. Okay. Show you. This might look familiar. I believe it's a Paradise Alley Pro Wrestling T shirt. I like that. <laughs> I like that, that shirt. Uh, Mr. Mario Mancini sent me over these uh, last month, so I believe that this is actually supposed to be on the back. Very embarrassing. I'm actually wearing it backwards, but there you go. Oh yeah, well, listen, you can't tell. It looks good. Yeah. You know, better was, have it underneath your chin. We can see your face instead of your back. The tag was here on it, so I just got rid of the tag. <laughs> yeah. Listen, man, if we were to rewind back, uh, pro wrestling is kind of a crazy world and business to get into. How did it all start for you? Well, um, without getting into a real, real long story, yeah, my, my, my baby sister is actually the one who inspired me. Um, she was born with Downs, and I wanted to do something um, something more with my life. I mean, I was successful uh, financially at the time, yeah. but I wanted to be able to reach out to, to kids and, and be able to go in and, you know, when they see you, they're like, oh, I know who that guy is, you know. Uh, be a celebrity, for lack of a better word. Yeah. And I started to dabble into uh, professional wrestling and – you know, went, went that route. Yeah. And how, how did the initial WWF will start their contact come and how did you end up on the TV screens there? Well, I mean, you know, starting at, starting at the school, there was a, a, a fighter that brought me in a uh, former pro fighter. And he said, Oh, you should do this. And I kind of shunned them off. And like I said, then my sister had been born and all this went down and I went back to him and said, Hey, you know, what's going on? Uh, you know, you're talking about this. He brought me to a live event. Uh, actually, Mario was at that live event. And then um, it just it went from there. I, I had to go to the school to learn. And, you know, it, it kind of generated from that that point on. Yeah. So you, you and Mario met pretty early on then in your career. In the oh, we've known yeah. each other for like 36, 37 years now. Yeah. Yeah. What is it that has kept you two guys together all this time? Um. Just the camaraderie, you know, the, the friendship, um, the trust, very important. He'll do anything for me. I'll do anything for him. And, and I think that's a that's a rarity. You know, my, my grandmother, God bless her, lived to be 107 years old. She said to me, if you could count your, you know, your friends on one hand, if you have one true friend, you're a very rich person. Um, and and I, I hold that now to this day to be true. Yeah, and you guys are obviously still involved in the business with Paradise Alley Pro Wrestling. And how is that going for you guys? It's good. You know, really, really good. Uh, we're happy with it. We're happy with the uh, product that we're turning out, meaning, you know, the wrestlers. Yeah. But again, you know, in this day and age, you know, it's tough. The, these kids got to go out there once they get released from us and work for other organizations and, and try to get spotted or go for a tryout or whatever the case may be. So it's tough. It's not like... You know, when Mario and I started, we get to go to TV. They'll take a look at you and they'll say, oh, yeah, we'll use them again. Or no, we won't or whatever. 
and mm -hmm. that's how you you know got lucky to break into the business so it was it's i think it's harder now i could be wrong but i think it's harder now yeah what do you think the main difference is between say when you were training to be a wrestler and now training these new guys to be a wrestler like i imagine a lot has changed yeah a lot's changed um i i think attitude has changed i think the way that um the different organizations conduct themselves has changed you know uh you have organizations now that cookie cut their wrestlers so you know paul roma is no different than roman reigns no different than mr perfect you know in this day and age you you take those three guys and you cookie cut them so you know you're not allowing us to go out and be who we want which is our character which actually got your attention so why do you want to change that you know and make it something that it's not that's what i get from all this in wrestling today mm -hmm. yeah um <clears throat> it's very it's very different and a lot of these guys that are training maybe can create their own brand if you like even outside the business is that difficult to manage is do you find that maybe sometimes people come in to have an ego already not into my school okay you know and, and mostly in my school we do we do get some people that want to come in and and learn more because you always learn you know every day uh yeah. that are already wrestling in the independent circuit um but we make sure we tone down as you would say an ego that's about to uh erupt or come up so uh you know again we don't see that problem yeah speaking of egos i have to talk to you about this man vince mcmahon obviously been in the news for all the wrong reasons lately do you remember the first time you met the guy and what's your kind of overall impressions of him i mean the first time i met him was just in a passing you know this is you know there's vince mcmahon go over say hello introduce myself um again he was busy 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 because he's filming for tv yeah uh, so that's what you know again it's it was kind of more like a, a hello pass me by so to speak other than that you know i i for the most part when something's being done with you and again he's a businessman you know he, it's he's the greatest guy in the world and then when he throws you on the back back burner you know he's the worst businessman in the world to you so uh but again at the end of the day he's a businessman and that's how he conducts his business and apparently it's been you know he did it right yeah mario mario was telling me a story when you guys used to go out uh, vince used to show up in different places and you guys would obviously be trying to pull a few women and stuff like that do you think he, he was jealous that maybe other guys were getting it on the phone as well uh, uh no I, I don't know maybe you know maybe he just wanted us to stick to wrestling yeah you know maybe i don't know that's a vince question yeah i'll have to get him on maybe he's got a bit of free time now i heard <laughs> yeah maybe <laughs> do you but do you believe that he's not involved in the business anymore because i i don't really believe that a guy like him you know it's 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 weird there's times when i say he'll never ever be done with it and then there's times when you know like people start talking like no he's done he's done um i think he's good he may have some say as far as uh table side talk you know with, with triple h with hunter and and uh, his daughter so there that may be is he out of it I think maybe now this time, I think maybe he is. Look, Hunter, Hunter could run the company. Him and Stephanie. Yeah. I mean, you know, Hunter knows what he's doing. Um, I don't know who was right in the angles for NXT. Uh, maybe it was him and Sean, or but they did Sean, a great job. So. You know, they did a really great job. You know, you can't look at every angle. You know, I could sit back as a wrestler and go, oh, they should have done this. Well, yeah, sure, in hindsight, right? Yeah. yeah. Um, but again, I, I think there's whatever um, formula he's using is working. And to run the company, I, I don't see him failing. Mm -hmm. That's that's just me. Yeah. We'll come back to we'll come back to Triple H later. Um 
Is there any truth to the rumour that you and Tim Powers were supposed to be managed by Mr. T, or is this one of the internet rumours that simply isn't true? No, 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 that's true. Um, yeah. Mr. T was supposed to come in, which he, he had been in, and yeah. then they were going to stick him. You know, Mr. T with us, and we were excited about it. We're like, wow, this would be great, especially back then. You know, T yeah. was on top, and he didn't show, he was a no show. And they, he didn't uh, show up. no, he didn't show up. And, and wow. the talk in the locker room was that he's notorious for no showing, and then that was it, done. Wow, no more Mr. Jesus. T. That is surprising for someone at that level of entertainment, really, to no show. Right, to be unprofessional like that. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it happened. What are you gonna do? Yeah, you know? nothing you can do about it. Um what was Bret Hart like to work with when you were in the WWF? He's a cake, a gem. Yeah. Lo loved working with Bret Hart. You know, um yeah, just easy. You know, there's yeah. some guys that are difficult and some guys that are easy. And when you get in with certain people, what we what I always the term I always use was uh, this is going to be a night off. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because he was so, he was very, um, what's the way of saying it? Very serious about the business, I guess, as well, wasn't he, Brett? Right, right. Yeah. So, you know, you brought that professionalism to the ring. When you got with different people, different wrestlers, there's a certain amount of professionalism, you you know, you could basically leave out if you want. And nobody's yeah. going to notice. So, like the Rockers. You know, the work with, yeah. with Marty Gennetti and Shawn Michaels was a night off. I mean, yeah. it was complete joy working with them. They were they were great. Yeah. Is there any standout moment for you looking back at the WWF and you say, that was my favorite match or he was my favorite opponent or anything that springs to mind? I think one of the matches that will always stick out in my head was the uh, Rosemont Horizon, which is probably a different name now. Excuse me. It was uh, the Rockers against uh, Power and Glory. And uh, we basically we were on before the main event. And it was just an incredible night. Like I said, the one that I remember. And, and believe me, SummerSlam, you know, which started this whole thing was, yeah. you know, was, was, you know, also pivotal. But nothing compared to this match, the crowd. You know, it was just deafening in there. Um, and actually, at the end, I, the next night, we were actually put on last because Hogan complained that he couldn't follow our match. So they put Hogan on before we came out uh, for basically main event, last match, because yeah. uh, he couldn't carry it. You know, he couldn't, he couldn't keep up with us. That's a massive compliment, obviously, for you guys coming from. I yeah. know people say about Hogan wasn't the best wrestler or whatever, but he was still yeah. kind of the guy. He was, we'll say. He, yeah, he was. I mean, he was a good showman, right? I mean, he was, yeah. seriously, you know, he can't wrestle. All joking aside, he can't wrestle. Yeah. Right? He was a great showman. And they put a lot of money behind him and they made it work, right? You beat anybody and everybody that comes up, well, they make you a giant. The only problem was. Hogan started believing his own bullshit. <laughs> you know what I mean? Hey, I'm really yeah. beating uh, Andre the Giant. No, you're not. No, you're not. You know what I mean? Hey, you know, hey, guy, you know, hit me with your finish. I'm going to kick out of it. Of course you are. You kick out of everybody's finish. That's what you do. But at the end yeah. of the day, you're just a punk ass. <laughs> what was he like as a person? You know, in the in the beginning, um, when 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 I really got to, um, well, let me retract that. When I okay. got to know him, mm -hmm. um, it was it was cordial. We when we traveled overseas together, you know, he'd be like, "Hey, Romy, going to the gym? Come on, I got a limo. Let's go." You know, you will come with me, okay? So as far as that, I, I think we got along well, and I thought yeah. he was, you know a stand-up guy and then the years went on and there was something that I saw that he had said about uh, handicapped kids and that really put an end to the respect that I had for him so from that point on I had no more respect for him it was over yeah. 
And then I just started, you know, guys just started coming at me with, you know, oh, he beats everybody. He kicks out of all their finishes. He always has to do this. He always has to do that. It's always about him. You know, did that really bother me? Yeah, not really. I mean, I'm talking about it now, but no, not yeah. really. What really bothered me was what was said about, you know, the, the, the kids. That bothered me. And that I just couldn't let go of. So from that point on, and then it was towards the end of me seeing him anyway, because then I was leaving. I was going to WCW. So, um, yeah, I just, you know, hey, how you doing? Hey, champ, or whatever the mm -hmm. case may be. Um, that was it. You know, just keeping the peace, as they say. Yeah, that's something I, I never heard before. And obviously it's personal for you as well. What, what exactly did he say or do you want to say what he said? No, he just he just based we we um we were in Detroit, and we had uh, just they had bring, brought in some kids from the hospital, yeah. and we you know it was kind of like a meet and greet. They took us out of the locker room. Hey guys, you come over here. These kids are sick. You know, blah blah blah. So oh yeah, great great. So we do. You know, and they march us in, and then we all went back and we thought it was done, and they came over to him and they said, hey, there's another kid. Can you get up, come over here? You know, to Terry. You know, and he's like. Oh. You know, what What the hell? You know, like, we're not getting paid for this. And, you know, you're like, I'm, mm. you're bothering me. Yeah. And I just looked at him and I was like, you're a piece of shit. Really? Yeah. You know, th that. so this is all bullshit. Say your prayers and take your vitamins and you know what? It's all bullshit. <laughs> um, so, again, there were very few that what they said, you know, what they... They didn't practice what they preached. Let's just leave it like that. Yeah, yeah. Um, the transition then, firstly, leaving the WWF, going into WCW. How did it all happen? How did you end up leaving the WWF? And then how did you end up, I suppose, signing well, up to I, 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 was, uh, I was watching wrestling on TV Yeah. when I was out of it. And I and I was a part owner in, in uh, World Gym. Right. And I just went home one night and, you know, the weekend came and I saw wrestling on and I was like, you know what? That's where I belong. So I called WCW. Um, they basically, you know, gave me the, you know, I don't know the direct answer, but it was, we'll give them the message or whatever the case may be. So I go, okay, fine. So I got a call at my, at my gym and um, they uh, just confirmed that it was me and uh, you know, they basically said, we're going to make you a horseman. And I said, okay. And then they told me that I was going to, what I was going to be paid each match. And there yeah. were going to be many matches. I was probably going to do TV once, maybe twice a month. You were going to work just TV. And I was like, okay. And they, they said to me, well, so the money's right. The money's okay. And I said, yeah. They said, well, we don't, we don't think you understand. And I said, okay, what? Well, we're going to make you a horseman. Yeah. And we're going to pay you this. Yeah. And you're probably going to work like twice a month. I'm like, okay. And the money's okay. And I went, yeah. And they just couldn't wrap their brain around it. But I was, call it a businessman, call it street smart, call it whatever you like, call it dumb luck. Mm -hmm. But I knew that since they were starting this up, how long could two times a month last before I'm booked all the time? So compound that times what they're going to pay me, I'll be okay. Yeah. And that's exactly how it went down. That's exactly what happened. I came in, we started with, you know, a couple times a month and then there's the booking sheet and, you know, now it's six times a month and now it's 10 times a month. Now it's 20 times a month. So yeah, yeah I was good with it. Did you feel any pressure going into a role like that because of the, the horseman, I suppose, brand or whatever? Wow. You know what? People are going to really come down on me about this, but, you know, I, I, I speak the truth. So uh, be it as it may. I didn't know what the hell the horsemen were. I knew of them for the most part. You know, all oh, the yeah. four horsemen. I've heard that talk um, in the WWF or, you know, just in general, just Mario Mancini, you know. Um, 
So to me, really wasn't a big deal. Yeah. But to them, it was this persona. You know, it was, you know, the horseman. I think, you know, how, how open can I be on this podcast? You know, I know you're going to put it up there. I don't want to be too. Oh, you can, open. you can say whatever you want, man. I won't, I never censor anybody. So okay. you can say whatever well, you want. I'm going to, I'm going to keep it as clean as I can. Uh, and yeah. it's, you know, wow. So to me, it was a job. Was it an honor? Yes, because in the world of wrestling, the four horsemen was an elite status. So for them to ask me, or let me rephrase that, for Dusty Rose, the American dream, to want to make me a horseman, that was a, a pat on my back. That was kudos to me. Um, so I was very fortunate. Yeah. However, it didn't mean shit to me for the most part. It's wrestling. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Um, you see you just see it as a an extension of your character. Just that's it. continue seeing the job. Yeah. That's it. So, you know, when I got down to WCW, I went out and nobody smartened me up as to, well, this is how the horsemen work. It was after I came out of a match. You know, Rick came over to me and said, that's not what a horseman does. Okay. That's not what a horseman does. Okay. So then what the hell does a horseman do? You know, what is what is in your brain that makes up this horseman thing? That's all you need to tell me. You know, you want me to spit on people, spit on my opponents? Okay, I can do that. You want me to kick them in the nuts? I can do that. Is that what horsemen do? You follow what I'm saying? I mean, yeah, you had yeah. a lot of people that were horsemen. But if somebody would sit down and tell me, okay, so this is what it is. Here's our list of how what, what how what we want you to do, well, how we want you to act. All right. Because listen, I could turn, I could turn in a heartbeat. You want me to get nasty? And especially back then, I get nasty, nastier than anybody you guys had. But just let me know. You know, I got in the car with Arn Anderson and we, we chatted, man. We talked, talked about family, talked about the road, you know, uh, talked about who we're going to wrestle that night. That's what we did. I got along with Arn. Listen, I cut a video because they wanted me. They wanted a controversial video. So I gave you controversy. Was some of the stuff I said true in it? Yes. Yes. Like slapping Bischoff in the face, making him cry like a little bitch. Yeah, that was true. That was true. Bischoff was the biggest mark in the world. Hogan sucked him into his delusion, and he bought all of that. Hogan brought all of his little, I shouldn't say little, all of his people in to wrestle. Yeah. You know what I mean? Hogan just cared about that. He didn't care about the business and keeping it afloat. When, when like you, you have a podcast. You do mm -hmm. the best you can because you want to keep it going. Well, when yeah. I went into the WWF, just like any job I, I took on, I worked as hard as I could because I wanted the, the business to stay afloat. I wanted to keep working there at that at that company. Now, yeah. I know it's just one of many people, but again, you know, I never wanted to see it fail because if the WWF failed, I was out of a job. Nobody smartened me up to all the different territories that they were. I never watched wrestling before I got into it. So I knew of nothing about wrestling. I didn't know the people in wrestling. You know, I've heard names like San Martino, but oh, there he is. You know, yeah. I didn't mark out to him. I just walked up to him and said, nice to meet you, Paul Roma. You know, where a lot of people would mark out to these people. Yeah. You know, like that guy you... just threw out of the seat. He marked out to San Martino, but... He was a wrestling fan, <laughs> right? He watched yeah. wrestling. He watched Bruno. When I saw Danny DeVito in the garden, in Madison Square Garden, I walked up to him and said, oh, Mr. DeVito, nice to meet you. I really enjoy, you know, your, your movies, you know, yeah. or whatever. I pulled out one movie, whatever it was, you know. I said, I really enjoyed it. And I walked away from him. I didn't ask for a picture. I didn't ask for an autograph. That's just not 
who I am, not my character, you know? And and I have regrets about some of that stuff, you know? Yeah. Like Lyle Alzado invited me out to a party when we were in LA and I didn't go. And then Lyle died not that short time after that. And I wish I had gone. Yeah. But that just wasn't me. It just wasn't, you know, how I was, how I was brought up, how I was built. Yeah. Of course, you and Aaron Anderson did wear gold in WCW as well, beating yeah. William Regal and Steve Austin back before Steve Austin was in that incarnation that we know. Well, it was WWF. supposed to be the Hollywood Blondes, but Pillman was hurt or something. Yeah. And what was what were those two guys like, say, Steve Austin and William Regal? Steve Austin's Regal. an incredible person. Yeah. I get along with them really, really well. And because um, he's real. Yeah. Let's just let's just, and I'm I'm going to use that term probably when you ask me about people, a little bit. But if I tell you they're real, they're good people. Yeah. Yeah. And William Regal. Um, him and I couldn't wrestle together. I mean, we did a couple times. We don't gel in any way, shape, or form. Um, we we're cordial to one another. I don't know what he thought about me. He was uh, he was knowledgeable. But he's not somebody that, you know, I'd say, oh, here's my friend. You know what I mean? And nothing against him. Yeah. You know, he's a, he's a nice guy. He never did anything wrong to me. At least not that I know of. But, yeah, just not my cup of tea, so to speak. Yeah, yeah. Just one of those things that doesn't, doesn't work out or there's no chemistry. Can't get along with everyone, Paul. No, you can't. Yeah, yeah. Um. <clears throat> The horsemen then would we'll, we'll, we'll kick back to it again because you say you had kind of an announcement to make about that. Do you want to tell us what's, well, you know, what's I, going I, on? I put my horsemen right up here now. You see behind me, there's four yeah, horses' heads. What I'll do is I'll remove myself there and you can. There you go. Look at that. The four, the four horsemen. Come on back on screen, man. Um, yeah. So, you know, I, I heard about Ric Flair's last match. And I was kind of thrown back saying when I found out who he was wrestling. Now, Jeff Jarrett, super, super guy. The other guys I don't know. I'm sure they're fine. I don't know them. Yeah. Um, but I met and talked to Jeff, and he's aces. He really is. But my question was this. It's his last match, and this is what they come up with. Right? Where yeah, I don't is, think I, I, I don't think I'm it was not, the initial plan. I think a few opponents are No, matches. well I heard it was supposed to be Steamboat. Yeah. But even Steamboat, where is where's the controversy? It was there was there an angle? Did where's they the ever have yeah. heat between each other? Just like this tag match. So I sat back, people told me what happened. They showed me, you know, little clips. I was like, wow. Then they said, well, it's not his last match. I said, what do you mean? Well, he's going to wrestle again. I said, he is? I said, well, let me ask you this. He's going to wrestle again. Who's he going to wrestle? Why doesn't he wrestle me? He doesn't like me. He didn't think I was a horseman. Right? I was in horseman caliber. He said it. So why doesn't he get in that ring with pretty Paul Glory Roma, one of the four horsemen. Huh? Why doesn't he get in with me? Huh? You want to be a whore, Rick? You want to keep wrestling match after match? Get in there with me. Bring Arn. Bring bring Tully. We'll bring him, bring him at ringside. So that's pretty you much that's with me. Let me show you and let me show the entire world. How much a horseman I really am. Let me show you in the entire wrestling nation how I can get down and wrestle. Bring it, baby. Bring it. Woo! How's that, Rick? How's that? Pretty Paul Roma. The glory. Huh? Here. There you go. How's that? I'll bust one of those upside your head. How's that? Yeah. Yeah. You avoiding me? And maybe that's the problem, huh? Let me show you the horseman that you said didn't deserve to be a horseman. Let me show you. 
I don't think he'll do it. I don't think he's got the balls to do it. Bring it. Don't get in the ring with people that you just wrestle around with. Get in the ring with somebody that wants to show the world that he deserved to be a horseman and wants to prove and show to you that he deserved to be on your team, Ric Flair. That's right. You know what? I don't think he's got an in him. I'm 63 years old, and I can still go. I'll show you what a 63-year-old looks like. I'll walk up those ropes backwards. I'll come off that top rope with that elbow. I'll show the whole world that Roma still has it. And anybody that thinks different, get in that ring with me after I'm done with him. And I'll whoop your asses too. So that's pretty much a challenge to Rick then. Hey, listen, he's not going to do it. They can talk all they want. Listen, when I say something about somebody and I see them at an autograph show or I see them somewhere down the line, they have a problem with me, jump. Jump. You may beat my ass, but you're going to know you've been in a fight. But there's a slim chance that that's going to happen. We'll just put that out where it belongs. So you know what? I'm challenging them. Yes, I'm putting it out there. Why don't you want to see somebody that used to be a horseman that he discredited in the ring for your last match? I'm willing to go. Question is, is he willing to go with the Roman? What was it about you being a horseman and he said to you, that's not how horsemen do things? What what was that in relation to? Was it I mean, match it was, moves? It was, nit, it, it was nitpicking. Right. You know, if I if I clapped my hands, you know, said, come on, Arn, come on. When, you know, he was getting hammered on. He'd tell me, no, no, no. We banged the turnbuckle. Okay. You banged. That, so that's it? The entire match? That's That's your problem with me? You know, um, then, and then I forget what else. It just it was petty stuff. Listen, got along with Arn. I got along with Rick. But then at some point, whatever the case may be, the nitpicking started. And you, you could tell there, you know, when we traveled together, when I traveled with Arn, it was really nice and peaceful. And, you know, and when Rick got in the car, you know, it was more, let me, let me talk to Arn. Let me talk a little bit of business. In the beginning, you know, we spoke and, you know, I was uh, added in. Mm -hmm. But then you can start feel to feel that separation. And, you know, was it because I was young, good looking, the chicks dug me? I don't know. Maybe. Maybe because, you know, when I walked into a room, I took the attention away from you. I demanded attention. I don't know. That's just my, you know look at things the grand scheme of things but I go back to it again so your people my people the fans in wrestling you want to see it bring it on after you're done you want to go and whore out again to somebody else do whatever you want but don't avoid me don't avoid me don't go picking all these people choice by hand you got no controversy with them none you got no no qualms with them you want to settle with roma here it is man your last match here it is bring it let's get it on yeah and when was the last time you guys spoke just before we wrap up uh probably i saw him four years ago and i just said hello that was yeah. it. I just said hello. Did he say hello to you? Yeah. 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 But it was just, hey, Rick. You know, hey, Paul. That's it. Yeah. You know, uh, R and I, I, I spoke with. It looked like he saw a ghost. Uh, <laughs> Holly, I spoke with. We had a long chat going on. And then one of my uh, students came over and, you know, he was blown away by, you know, there he is, Tully Blanchard. And, uh, I left them too, and I went back to my table. So, um, you know, good guys. Good guys. 
Yeah. So do do you think Rick will actually respond to this thing, or do you think he'll uh, ignore it and sweep it under the carpet? Because as you said, he's kind of handpicked his last few opponents. He mightn't see this coming. Yeah, I don't know. You know, I mean, can he can he handle one on one? Last time he had a tag match, you know, and I get it. You know, he's he's not that young guy anymore. I get it. So can he handle? Can he go? Only he knows. Listen, if he avoids me, he can't go with me. You take from it what you want. The wrestler fans are taking from it what they want. But right now, I'm telling you, Paul Roma says, if he does not accept my challenge, he cannot get in that ring and go the distance with Paul Roma. Woo! How's that? Perfect, man. That was a, a great little interview there and really appreciate you taking the time out today and we'll leave on that little bombshell there. Beautiful. Yeah. Hey, listen, thank you for having me on your show. Um, yeah. I, you know, I always wanted to, always wanted to travel to Ireland and um, Lord willing, before I, before I pass, I'm going to get there. Yeah. And I think Mr. Mancini wants to go with you as well for some Guinness. <laughs> we 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 don't really do tacos over here he'd be disappointed to know it's not really a thing over here i'll keep my eye on him don't worry i'll yeah. watch out for him but thanks, yes man. thank you very much really appreciate being on your show yeah thanks a lot for that